What's up, Maridistas? This is Keon Savani. Happy Friday. Just got a little treat for you guys. Heading into the weekend before Real Madrid take the field in Sevilla against Osasuna in the Copa del Rey final, which we will have a post-game show up tomorrow night and obviously lots of coverage on the site. Just wanted to introduce today's clip to you guys. It is taken from this week's world-famous Real Madrid mailbag that happens exclusively over on patreon.com slash managingmadrid. And we answered a bunch of questions. And the two questions that I've included for free this week was, um, one, how do we line up with Jude Bellingham? And two, do Real Madrid miss Casemiro? So Lucas and I answered that and a ton, ton, ton more. Full episode is over on patreon.com slash managing Madrid. You can also click on the link in the show notes. Enjoy. And thank you for consuming the content. Uh, Patrick Odiafati says, uh, I think this is the first time we might be talking about Bellingham. Yeah. Patrick <laughs> says, hi, Keon and Lucas. I hope you're both doing well. Do you think Zidane potentially coming back again could have anything to do with Jude potentially choosing Real Madrid? In a hypothetical situation, let's say Zidane does come back and we bring in Fran Garcia, Brahim Diaz, Jude Bellingham, and a backup striker to Benzema. How do you think Zidane would shape the team, especially the midfield? In big games, Zizou like to play a four-man midfield of Fede, Cruz, Casemiro, and Modric. Can you see a four-man midfield of Fede, Jude, Chuomeni, and Kamavinga working out? How effective could they all be together? First of all, I don't think Zidane is, is going to come back next summer. So that's one thing. But for for argument's sake, I don't I don't I'm not sure I agree with the with the phrase uh Sisu like to play in big games, Sisu like to play a four man midfield of Fede Cross, Casemiro and Modric. Do you think? I don't was that his trademark his trademark lineup in, in Madrid? When Fede was at this form, obviously not in the first era, but when Fede was, I'm I'm not well, sure I agree with that. What, what, where I thought the sentence was going when Patrick said four-man midfield, I thought he was going to mention the Isco diamond. Um, yeah. But he did. So in that Super Cup semifinal against Valencia. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I think that was the birth of where he put like a lot of midfielders on the field, like four to five central midfielders. Mm-hmm. I'd have to go back and see how often he did that. Yeah, yeah, but true. It's true. Like, I mean, there was a period where he was actually benching Modric for Fede, and Fede worked his way into the team. And I, I'm sure there w- this happened quite a bit, though. It's not like it's not like he was doing it every game. But I also don't think it was a matter of him never doing it either. I think there was yeah, sure, definitely sure. some lineups where we saw yeah, this. sure, sure. You, um, the question, can we see a four-man midfield of Fede, Jude, Be- Chouameni, and Kamavinga working out? Definitely. I think on paper, that's brilliant, man. I think on paper, that's uh, that has everything you want from a four-man midfield. You know, you have Kamavinga and Valverde as the pseudo-wingers, kind of adding de- uh, width to the to the midfield, Chouameni and Bellingham in the, uh, you know, Chouameni with a more defensive role, Bellingham with a more creative role. And with his back pretty much safe because, you know, he would have both Camavinga and, and Valverde kind of allowing him to, to have this freedom to operate. So on paper, I think that that midfield looks more than fine. I think that that looks brilliant, although I'm not sure that's a plan. I'm not sure that's the plan going forward for Madrid, that form uh, man uh, midfield line. I'm I'm not sure that's the plan going forward for Madrid, even in, even in big games, to be quite honest. So, but on paper, I think... It has everything you need from a from a midfield. People will always ask, like, what do you think is the best lineup with Bellingham if all these yeah. midfielders stay? But specifically, let's just imagine the world without Moro and Cruz. Yeah, yeah. What's the bed, best midfield with Bellingham, Camavinga, Chuomeni, Valverde, and Chuomeni. Valverde? And, like, I think we overthink it sometimes. All these lineup combinations are great options. Like yeah, you propose, yeah. hey, do you think uh, a midfield of Chuomeni, Kamavinga, and Bellingham would work? Yes, I do. Do you think a midfield of Fede and Kamavinga and 
too many would work? Yeah, I do. Do you think a dull pivot of Fetty <laughs> and Kamavinga would work? Yeah, I do. Do you think Bellingham in that 10 or a roaming uh, line breaker as the, the highest midfielder would work? Yeah, I do. All of these are great options. There's no wrong yeah. answers to this. So these are just options. Like, I don't think... I Sometimes I think we spend too much brain power thinking of, like, what is the de facto starting 11? Well, we just know that the season is long and all of these lineup combinations would work. Okay, let me ask you, though, what would be your ideal or your favorite way of building that midfield in a <laughs> world where Modric and Kroos don't exist? On paper, obviously, we have not seen Bellingham and Kamavinga playing together just yet. You know, on paper, based on their skill set, what would be, right now, what would be your go-to midfield with those? A little bit uh, blasphemous. I don't know what the, what the word is, but uh, <laughs> I would I would go with Chu Mani Kamavinga and Bellingham. Me too. And be- I'd bench Fede Valverde. Me too. Yeah, it's a painful too, thing to say, but I think Bellingham's a better player than Fede. Me too. I agree. Yeah, I think that would be my my midfield trio as well. And again, it it hurts me because Valverde has done nothing wrong to be benched in this in this context, but. That lineup is definitely promising. I will go for that too. Um, I did want to ask you a question though. Um, yesterday I did a Twitter audio space. And as people mm-hmm. were asking questions, I realized something. A lot of people were asking this question about midfield lineup options. I actually think there's one person that may suffer the most. And it's not a midfielder. It could be Rodrigo. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Because it's even though Bellingham is not a winger or an attacking player like Rodrigo, obviously he can attack, but it's very possible that Real Madrid will, yeah. will play all four midfielders, which means Vinicius yeah, and absolutely. Benzema are left. So I, I kind of feel yeah. bad for him in that situation. I, I'm curious to know what will happen. So it seems like you agree with that. Yeah, or yeah, I definitely. Concerned. definitely. Uh, I agree because I don't think Rodrigo has established himself all that much to be an undisputed starter if Bellingham signs, whereas I think it's... Like, let me translate this and, and rephrase it real quick. I think it's tougher to bench Valverde right now than, than Rodrigo. From a, you know, from every, from every standpoint possible you can imagine. It's more controversial to bench Valverde right now than benching Rodrigo. So the most comfortable decision in order to leave uh, the easiest man, uh, on the bench, the easiest man to replace on the bench. The easiest choice would be to to put either Valverde or Bellingham on the on the right wing and and then start the other the other three in the midfield. So Rodrigo would go to the bench. I think that's just the most comfortable and the easiest thing a coach could do to accommodate the, these names we're talking about. Yeah, I also um, just wanted to make the point that um, uh. Well, first of all, like I did see a lot of people suggesting, like you know, what if we did three five two with Kamavinga <laughs> and Fede Valverde as the wingback? I, I I don't think. Oh no, please! I really don't think that's going to happen. That that's just not going to happen. Um. Oh man, Lucas, I just lost my train of thought. Well, where was I going with that original point? Valverde Rodrigo. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Rodrigo. Even though, like right now, the perception, like Fede, is more undroppable, for example, in the in the eyes of Ancelotti than Rodrigo is. So this is why I said, in my my starting midfield, if I had to choose, like in a starting lineup, I believe in Rodrigo so much, and I believe in how much he helps our offense so much Absolutely. that I wouldn't bench him, and that's I I would I would go with Rodrigo Vinicius Benzema up top next year, or any Me big too, game yeah. if all these players are healthy, and then I would go with what I said, too many Kamavinga. And uh, uh, Bellingham. <clears throat> On the other hand, it to. might be true that if the debate comes down to Chuameni and Rodrigo instead of Valverde and Rodrigo, maybe Rodrigo's thoughts are a little, uh, a little bit higher. If Camavinga can actually play as a defensive midfielder, you know, Camavinga, Valverde, and and Bellingham with Rodrigo on the right, it it, it all depends on how the on how the season ends. How the next season starts, obviously, if Bellingham ends up signing for Madrid, it, it will all depend on the preseason, the form at the moment, and all that for for us to see the first few starting starting lineups. This is just a but key might... point. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go... Sorry. No, 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 just go ahead. Yeah, sorry. 
No, I'm just going to say this is a key point too. If he signs, we kind of acted like it's a yeah, foregone sure. conclusion. We don't, this is not official. Um, yeah, exactly. All right, we're going to take one more. It's from Ranta. Ranta says, maybe this question is a bit premature, but have we missed Casemiro this season? I feel that his leadership qualities on the pitch are definitely missed. I think he would protect Vinicius much more than the players are doing now. Casemiro felt like an older brother to the rest of the Brazilians. With hindsight, all aspects considered like the transfer fee and the playing time of our young midfielders, was it the right decision to sell him? We all fear the, that uh, this could happen. You know, Real Madrid were, uh, took that money because they believed they could not get that kind of offer a year later for Casemiro, you know, after. So they decided to, yeah, to, to, to cash that money last summer and, and trust that to a many would adapt maybe quicker than, than what he's done at, uh, at the moment this season. But we all fear that, you know, Real Madrid maybe were, were rushing things a little bit too much and that it would have been nice uh, to keep both so that Chuameni could learn and have uh, a little bit, so that everyone could be a little bit more patient with him and his, and his process. But I think so. I think the team has to miss Casemiro this season. I think so. I think so, especially after the, after the World Cup break. I think Casemiro has been phenomenal for Manchester United. I think Real Madrid's midfield has missed a man like uh, Casemiro, again, especially after a World Cup break. So I think the answer is yes. Now, if you ask me, would would you take that offer again in hindsight? I don't know. I would have to take a look at the budget. I would have to take a look to take a look at the club's finances. If we are... <sighs> as desperate about money as we seem to be, or at least Real Madrid seemed to be last summer, because, I mean, there's no reason to sell Casemiro other than money last summer. Mm, the answer is probably yes, because I don't feel uh, I, uh, a Casemiro, you know, I don't think Real Madrid would, would have received that kind of offer for Casemiro in 2023. So they decided that, that you know, it was the best possible time to sell him. Uh, is very similar to what happened with the Cristiano Ronaldo uh, deal. You know, they Real Madrid feared that you know this hundred million offer would not come their way a year later, and decided to sell him. Even though you know in that particular season, definitely Cristiano would have been useful, would have started, and, and would have improved the team a lot. So it's a very comparable situation. And but to me, the answer is yes. Real Madrid have definitely missed Casemiro. If you ask me, would you have sold him? It depends a lot on the team's finances. I think we all acknowledge that there, w there could be some short-term pain with this one. Um, yeah. We thought that that would be lessened with Chiuameni. We knew that Chiuameni was a great signing. Now, look, people will hear me say that and might, they might disagree now because of the season he's having. I, I'm not worried about him still. But it's true that um, after the World Cup, he's had that big injury and then he hasn't been quite too many yet, but new league, new new language, new uh, new country, first season, young. Let's just remember the art of patience. But but we did acknowledge that there might be some short term pain. It has the answer to have we missed Casemiro this season is undoubtedly true because we could have really used him in a lot of these games where we've had holes defensively. And Kamavinga, who has actually looked good in that role, has to go to left back. So he can't play that role. So, of course, we missed him. The answer is yes. And also these this other stuff that Ranta mentions, like, you know, Casemiro, like an older brother to the Brazilians, and Vinicius coming to his defense. Yeah. Definitely missed the leadership aspect of it as well. So, yeah. yes, for sure. We definitely do miss but him. The off but on the other hand, the offer was so good that, it still makes me have a second thought about whether or not, even though Real Madrid have missed him, whether or not I actually maybe would still do it again. You know, the offer was so good for a player of his age, I think. But, but both things can be true. The, it can absolutely, be true that absolutely. we miss him, but also we should have, it doesn't mean we shouldn't have sold him at that time. And also, absolutely. we can't re forget the fact that he wanted to go to Manchester United. Allegedly. <laughs> well, I don't think we pushed him out the door. He now, like it's true, we signed too many. 
but he would no one forced him out. He was under contract. We all know at Real Madrid, you can't just we can't just sell players out on contract. We know that very well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if that was if this was like the NBA, you could just like trade Hazard. You could like you know yeah, yeah. see him. <laughs> you just can't do that in football <laughs> for a draft pick, second yeah. round draft pick. <laughs> yeah, or send him to the G League. <laughs> I guess we could send him to Castilla, theoretically. Oh, he's probably too old to do that. Um, anyways, my point was that uh, he he seemed happy to go to Manchester, too. Yeah. He gets paid quite well. He links up with his old buddies, Baran and, well, I guess Ronaldo left pretty pretty quick. But you get, yeah. my, you get my point. Like, you know, there was also the point that we didn't ha- hold him at gunpoint and if you wanted to Yeah, go. sure, sure. 